Okay, so what we're gonna do is just kind of come in here and I'm gonna start a brand new project and we'll work from scratch just like the uh, audience member asked before. Anyone else have any questions while we're doing that? Let me make sure I can see what we're doing. All right, so blank group, everything's ready to go. Let's go ahead and browse for something. So we'll go ahead and browse for a kit, drum kit first. Now what I want to show you is uh, this brand new 2.5 update also comes with a bunch of brand new library stuff. So there's, I don't know how many kits are in here, but man, there's a ton. So browsing is the same as you, if you're a complete control user, you know how that works. You get this nice on-screen overlay and it's very easy to rip through and, and find exactly what you want. So we'll go ahead and let's load up one of these favorites I made. And now you have a drum program ready to go. Let me browse for a different one here. I think this is the one I liked. Great sounding kits. All right. If we come to pad mode, now we can play this on jam. But again, remember, they are um, not velocity sensitive. So this is another reason why you might want the best of both worlds. Like, you know, as opposed to just that. But again, step sequencing, we're already used to this. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly change velocities if you want to kind of tweak it out like that. Uh, sorry, I just realized everything got real loud because I was using a limiter before so as to not hurt anyone's ears. Let's just do this. All right. Okay, so trigger our stuff, and now we come into step mode. And the cool thing about Jam is that you have three different step modes. All right, so what we're going to do is hit play. Let me turn my metronome on to. If I want to adjust my tempo, make sure you guys can still see this. I just hit tempo, and I can adjust. Let's go up to like 128. Someone the other day told me that's the magic that's the magic tempo to make the floor move properly. <laughs> and let's zoom in from here. So you want to be able to see what the step sequencing looks like. Step sequencing, again, was fine. I was happy with step sequencing on Machine Studio. I can just throw on a four on the floor. I'm, I'm used to that. But it's, it's different. I write different depending on which one I'm on. And I kind of prefer, actually, you know, working with this. So... Let's do some step sequencing. What can you do first? Well, let's do our four on the floor right now. Very easy. So you can see I have a default velocity. And now if I hit accent, I hold shift select and I can put this in accent. And I can do instant new order if I want. Right? Very easy. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely blunt here. One of my biggest knocks on Machine Jam initially was just, I was like, I, I, I want velocity-sensitive pads. I want to be able to dial in this velocity quickly. You can do it one of two ways, but it could still use an improvement. And the great thing about machine software is this can be updated in any time to basically, uh, in my opinion, fix this. So what I can do now is hold down Shift Record Mode, and I get this nice little on-screen overlay that you can't see. Let me uh, come here. All right, can everyone see this? So I hit Shift Grid, which is record mode, and now I can set my input velocity for the default setting and for the accent amount, okay? So maybe I want to come in and actually, let's do some hi-hats, actually. First, before I do that, I want to keep my four on the floor. So I'm going to come out of step mode, and I'm going to duplicate this pattern because I, I always stress when you're writing inside a machine, you should probably just overdub. Uh, because once you start getting a lot of patterns, that gives you the flexibility of then going back and working in an arrangement much easier, rather than trying to like delete everything you just did and create variations, okay? So, step mode, we got our kicks, we duplicated the pattern. Let's throw this guy in. And I wanna change my velocity sensitivity from default 100 to like 80. This is really fast once you get going, okay? So it's not the most ideal scenario, but you can make it happen. So let's... Okay, maybe I want to do an accent. 
But again, maybe I can come in here and say, I don't want that accent to be 127, I want it to be 109. And now you're gonna get variations. So still, super fast to do. I wouldn't worry about it. What I would love to see is, for instance, when I'm in the step mode, maybe like a nice grid here of the 16 levels of velocity. So I could say, okay, I want full 127 now, or I want like 60. Um, or a lot of people have said, what if I just hold down the step and then I could touch a smart strip to actually adjust the velocity from there. That would be amazing too. So these are all features that the developers know. And again, this is stuff that hopefully can be addressed in a quick software update eventually. So uh, for anyone complaining, it's not velocity sensitive. Well, it's not that terrible. And again, uh, <laughs> I just go back to the days where we had, you know, products that did a lot less. So, okay. All right. Um, cool. We got two things sequenced. Let's go ahead. Let's turn that metronome off now. I don't need that. And now let's go out of step mode. Let's duplicate again. And let's throw in some hi-hats. Okay. And in step mode, look how fast this is compared to even something like machine. Now, something like this, I immediately don't like that hi-hat. And because I'm fast on machine and I know what I'm doing, <clears throat> I know exactly how to fix it. So remember when I was telling you about the control mode, this is exactly what you would normally see here inside a machine. But I know I just want to take the hi-hat decay down. And even though I can't see what these knobs are, I know by muscle memory that if I come a page over, I can put this in ADSR mode, and now here's my uh, decay. Right? I've been using machine for like seven years or whatever. I know what I'm doing, but I would imagine many of you do too. So it's it's one thing I, I kind of, I actually kind of like not being able to see what I'm doing. It's more fun to kind of get in here and, you know, you're just kind of reacting to this thing and having fun. But it is that fast too if you want to make quick changes. So I'm going to take accent off. Right? So let's get a little more groove going. I don't want it to be so, you know, static all the time. And we're going pretty good now. Okay, so I have a solid base here. Let's go ahead and duplicate it again. And let's go add some snares. And this time, I'm going to hold down step and hit four. So there are three modes of the step sequence. One, four, and eight. One means one pad at a time, one sound at a time. Four means four at a time. Now, this is one thing that actually differentiates Machine Jam from other products. Um, push is great. Ableton Push does sequence one thing at a time. And sometimes I like sequencing just one thing at a time, but sometimes it's faster to get in here and do two, right? And again, I'm writing in a two-bar pattern, so you can see, depending on the different modes, you're going to see your bar count up at the top here, okay? And it's easy to get through, and some people might complain, well, why do I have to keep hitting this? You can actually just come back in here into record mode, and set the pattern follow. Okay, so now let's play back. And now I can see here, right, and wait for it to come around again. Make my adjustments. Very simple. Any questions while I'm going through this? Everyone getting this? Okay. How did you make it follow pattern? I go shift grid. Can you see my overlay or am I not showing this software again? Okay, yeah. So shift grid puts you in this record mode. And then again, to scroll through all these, it's super fast with this click encoder. You just kind of come here and select down, push, and like that. Make sense, Ronick? Perfect. And this is where you can also turn your quantize on and off. And again, set those velocity settings. This on-screen overlay, you're going to get real used to it. Like, Again, when I hit browse, you're going to see it here. When I do things like hold down notes, you're going to see it. Um, we'll come back to notes in a second, but all this kind of stuff. If I hold down shift lock, you're going to see whether I want to morph through my different lock states. It's very fast, very easy to kind of navigate. Again, I've only been on a little time, but it took me like two days to be fully, I feel, on top of my game with Machine Jam. So I think everyone who has it is going to pick it up, no problem. Okay, let me come back to here. Here's my again if you if you missed me okay so we're making a little pattern here very easy to do 
Now, come back to step mode, and again, now we can see our next our next pads. I actually like this because I like having them both together because I can kind of just know what I'm looking for. So I hear up that shaker. Oh, that's my other snare. Let's actually put that in too. Again, guys, I don't know what I'm doing here. I just, it, you write differently. I would these patterns sometimes I don't come up with when I'm just sitting and, and playing on the pads. So I love, again, getting in that mode of just doing step sequencing instead. So very easy to come in. Now, let's also show you the last step mode. I, I personally, I don't use this that much because I feel like it almost goes too fast. But for a lot of people, this might make a lot of sense when you put it in an eight mode, okay? So now I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at the same time. Okay, there's my kick. No, let's go here. And again, I want to quickly get in here and change the default velocity, and this is how easy it can be. So if you want to do a snare roll or something, it's, it's very easy to kind of get in there and do.